Okay, he hello everybody. Um, my name is Brian O'Loughlin. I work with Analog Devices in Systems Development Group. And uh, I'm supposed glad to be here today to give a, an overview on 3D time of flight technology. Um, so very briefly, I'll have a, have a, just show you some of the different sensing solutions um, in, for different use cases, different environments. Um, give a brief high-level overview of 3D time of flight. Show you some common use cases across different industries. Uh, walk through the ADI capability and some of the offerings we have. And at the end, we'll go through a collaboration example that we'll be working on with the Arrow, Arrow team. So we, 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 um, this was one, one other thing to mention at the outset. We do have a demo of this technology at the Arrow boot over in Hall 4A today as well. So we'd probably welcome anybody to, to come and see that, and we can answer any more technical questions over there um, later on. So with, with, with that said, we'll, we'll keep going. Um, so really just want to highlight, the, the, I suppose, the, the variety of sensing technologies that are out there. Um, there's a huge variety in terms of range, um, environment. So just to show you, I suppose, where 3D time of flight sits, um, it's, 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 it's more targeted at short range communication or sh short range detection up to 10 meters. Um, then as, as, a, as a next step up, step up in terms of range, um, we have LiDAR. So LiDAR is, at, at this point, is ranging any place from maybe 40 to 100 meters. And beyond that, just as an example, uh, we've got 20, 24 gigahertz radar. Um, there's, there's a lot of advancements ongoing every day in, in each of these technologies. And I suppose in, in, the, in the radar space alone, um, there's a huge amount of activity in 77 gigahertz radar for automotive and also 60 gigahertz radar for a lot more industrial and consumer type use cases. And the, the, the benefit on 60 gigahertz is it's part of the ISM band and um, can be deployed worldwide without any RF um, constraints. Um, so just quickly to, I suppose, m moving back to the, to, the, to the 3D depth sensing area, um, just want to do a quick comparison against some of the other methods that are available. So we've got multi-array stereoscopic, structured light, time of flight continuous, and time of flight pulse packet, or indirect time of flight, which, which is the space that we have done our development in. So I suppose the, the, the key thing is just to point out here in terms of uh, sorry, um, the resolution, power, outer usability, depth accuracy, frame rate, and distance. Uh, so, so the key things to know about 3D time of flight is resolution is very good. It's VGA or SXGA. Um, on the power consumption side, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's the lowest in, in, in this category. Uh, outer usability. Uh, with advancements in lasers, um, th this is an area where, where it's also improved. Um, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Uh, depth accuracy is pretty good. Uh, one one percent is, is typically what, what we'll see up to three meters. Uh, maybe go a little bit above one percent for ranges of up to ten meters. Um, frame rate is fast. Again, depends on I suppose, your, your overall processor in your system and how quickly you, you, you want to process the data. Um, so in, in our applications, we're looking at up to 30 frames per second. Um, and again, the distance and range, uh, just to highlight, it's, it's, it's limited by the laser strength. Um, and, and with these type of devices, we also got to make sure that we conform to class one safety laser requirements. Um, not to damage human eye and um, have any, I suppose, um, issues around conformity and, and, and human safety is probably paramount in, in all these applications. Um, OK. So I suppose just at, at, at a high level, um, the concept of time of flight is, is probably well known just for measuring the round trip time of a transmitted pulse, the time for that pulse to hit the target, and for that pulse to come back from the target into the sensor in, on the receive side. 
Um, so li like I mentioned, the, the method that we've applied for 3D time of flight is indirect time of flight. So it's, it's, it's a pulsing mechanism. Um, so the, the, the basic operation is that there's, there, there's synchronization happens between the transmit pulse and two out of phase um, shutter pulses on your receive side. So it's, it's kind of critical in the operation. So when, when, when the laser fires, it's, it's controlled in the timing generator. Um, and it, it, that, that is tightly synchronized with two shutter pulses that, that fire the imager. And the, the purpose of the two pulses is they're out of phase. And as you can see in the example, you have your laser pulse, and the two return the, the reflected pulse from your target is, is captured in the two windows. And depending on the range of the device, your target device from, from where you, you have your source, um, you get different levels of photons built up on each sample. <clears throat> and by comparing the ratio of your two received windows, you can deduce that to calculate your, your, your depth and your range. So at, at, at a high level, that's, that's the basic principle of operation. Um, on the next slide, we have just a more graphic version of that, where, again, you have your, your near object. Um, then we have a farther away object. You can see the, 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 the variation on the, the two capture windows. So again, like I said, that information is used to calculate your 3D depth information and, and, and your range. Um, so again, yeah, this just steps you through the, 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 the process I described. Uh, so one, one thing to highlight is time of flight, it's, it's independent of reflectivity. It's purely based on the photons that are received on the sensor. So it doesn't, if you have a highly reflective object or a very low reflection level object, it, it doesn't make any difference. You still get your 3D depth information. Um, yeah, so uh, one, I suppose it's, it's just worth talking about this one for, for a few seconds. So this gives us the spectrum of sunlight. And what I mentioned earlier is with, with advancements in laser technology, um, because this is the, the, the lowest noise point on the sunlight spectrum at 940 nanometers, um, with use of 940 nanometer lasers, um, we, we get a good success in, in outdoor performance on the 3D time of flight system. So I suppose that's, that, that's one key point with the 3D time of flight technology, that 940 nanometer wavelength is, is, is well suited to it. Um, okay, so just want to walk through some kind of depth mapping applications. And just to show you, I suppose, the breadth of where the technology can be used um, and I'll go into a little bit more detail in the follow-on slides on, on some of these as well. Uh, so we've got AR, VR, uh, again, gesturing, virtual reality, gaming. It's the, 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 there's a huge, huge scope for, I suppose, development in this space, and lots of, lots of companies are putting lots of time and resources into it. Um, commonly, you, use cases in drones for short-range collision avoidance, landing and takeoff, uh, very wide variety of industrial applications, particularly around safety with robot arms, um, but, but also in autonomous vehicles and lo lots of other processing, I suppose, um, operations in, in industrial. Um, automotive applications, gesturing, driver monitoring, lo lots, lots of other areas like that. Um, surveillance people counting, um, it's, it's been proven to work pretty well in this space as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll show you an example later before I finish up. And again, with um, SLAM or simultaneous location and mapping, um, again, huge amount of investment and exploration going on in this space with, with, with lots of companies. And y y what you've happened here, and, and probably in other areas as well, you've a lot of sensor fusion where there's other sensors in your system detecting different, I suppose, positioning techniques. And those combined with 3D type of flight 
um, can lend themselves to give you very accurate real-time map generation and location identification as well for, for various objects and, and devices. Um, OK, so just to go through these pretty quickly, again, where we have green ticks are areas where analog devices have, uh, I suppose, solutions developed um, and presented in, 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 in different form factors. Uh, or, sorry, not so much form factors, but presented in different ways to, to our customer base. Uh, so industrial autonomous vehicles, warehouse management, surveillance video, people counting, 3D scanning, and safety, proximity sensing are, are, are probably the key ones to highlight. Um, and we, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about these. Um, just, I suppose, again, to highlight the, the, the different areas where 3D time of flight technology can be applied. Um, we'll just pick a, a very simple back-end product handling example in, in any manufacturing environment where you have a warehouse with logistics and transport. Um, we, we've, like, very quickly, you, you've, you've got five examples here um, where you can deploy probably the same hardware platform but with different algorithms and different software, make five different uses from it. Um, so the, the, these kind of fall into classification sorting, 3D scanning, because you've got a so 3D time of flight would be particularly useful to, for an, an autonomous vehicle to pick up a box, calculate the space on the shelf, and make sure that space is big enough before you go put the box in. Um, then similarly, the box gets picked off, gets put on a pallet. You've got a robot arm doing packing for the safety applications here. Um, right down to pallets being picked up and placed in the back of a truck. And, and I suppose what's central to the whole thing is um, you, can, you, can, you can deploy a 3D time of flight system for safety and security, to have person recognition, to make sure only authorized people are in a certain zone, or to create an alarm if somebody is where they, where they shouldn't be. Um, OK. So yeah, moving on. Um, just want to talk a little bit more about the analog devices chipset. And I suppose the, the, the key thing to highlight is we've got a family of devices under the ADDI 903X family. So the, the two we talk about for now are the 9033 and the 9036. Um, so I suppose the, the, the overall system, you, you've, you've got your, your start on the, on the transmit side, so, you, so you've got your timing generator. Um, it generates your, your laser firing pulse. It also generates your, si your, your, your shutter synchronization pulse. Um, so your laser emissions comes from your diode, hits the target, comes back in through the lens, goes through the CCD sensor. Um, the front, analog front end consists of, uh, let's call it a grid array type approach to, to, to read the CCD sensor. Um, this data is, or these, these signals are, are, are cleaned and I suppose any, any, any jitter and kind of clocking misalignment is, 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 is fixed as, as they're passed out at this point into the depth processor. Um, so th this is the core of the chip where the depth processor then translates the information that comes back from the sensor and it's processed and passed off to your, your back-end processor via MIPI interface. Um, so on, on the left-hand side, you just have a comparison um, of a RGB color image versus the depth map image that you get from the 3D time of flights solution. Um, again, just to show the, I suppose, the, 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 the the circuit diagram in a little bit more detail. Um, in, in the center, we have the, the, the analog devices 3D compute chip. Um, we have, sorry, the, our laser, yeah, our, our laser control firing, and also we've got the TF sensor 
and our ADI power. So I suppose what's, what's critical to highlight here between the laser driver and the power is the lasers draw a significant amount of current when, when they're being fired, but we want that to happen very cleanly and very quickly. Um, so correct component selection for your power and for your laser driver is, is essential. So in, in the design we, we, we have completed, um, these components have been picked and, and I suppose optimal components are in these locations in the circuit to, to, to ensure best performance. Um, again, just highlighting uh, the resolution of our system is 6, 6, 640 by 480 pixels um, VGA. Um, and again, yeah, just to highlight some of the advantages. So, so, so with the solution, we, we get pico, picosecond accuracy. So it, it, it just gives you increased um, depth information. Um, la laser temperature compensation, like I mentioned, because the lasers are very high wattage um, and for a very short instantaneous time uh, when the current flows there, the temperature rises dramatically. So we, we need some mechanism for, for temperature compensation as well to, to keep kind of reliability in the system. Um, VGA resolution, it's up to 4x higher than, than, than other solutions that are out there. Um, if, if, if you do go and use the ADI solution, and you, you, you'll probably compare it to others, you, you, you can see the benefits. Uh, we mentioned already 940 nanometer, uh, excellent for outdoor operation with sunlight. And um, interference cancellation feature as well, which is needed in factory automation, where, particularly where you've got multi-sensor applications. Um, th this is probably a differentiator in the ADI solution. Um, and we, we, can, we can talk about it more if people are interested afterwards. <coughs> So again, I suppose in, in summary, um, it's just worth highlighting the high resolution and depth accuracy, multi-channel interference, um, and with the 940 nanometer, uh, operates in strong sunlight. Um, I'll just go on to show you a few examples that ADI have developed. Um, and let me see if, I may have two short videos that I, that I can play if, if my system is is behaves. Um, so again, th this one, uh, just what we want to highlight here, it's, it's uh, like an application for a robotic arm where you have like a traffic light system that you have your green zone where the machine behaves as normal and works at normal operating speed. You have a, an orange area, whoops, sorry. Um, we have an orange, the, the orange zone where the machine detects presence of something that shouldn't be there and it starts to slow down the robot. And then if we, we have the red zone and if the red zone is impeded, immediately the machine stops. So I suppose this is a real world example and there's some software developed that, that can go with the ADI platform um, to, to implement this feature. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll come back and maybe just give you a quick snapshot of the video in, in, in a few minutes. Uh, so moving on to a second example, um, so this, this, this is in the area of, of people counting and flow, flow counters. Um, so again, uh, some testing has been done within analog devices and the, the results that show t 3D time of flight as a, as a mechanism for people counting are, are very positive and, and, and it's, it, it's, it's, it's an area that I suppose we're very happy with, and, and uh, the business unit who own this technology, it's, it's, it's probably one of their key areas that they're looking at in the near term as well to, to deploy a solution for. So again, it, it's an example of added value that analog devices can offer on top of your, your, your basic hardware. Um, so with, with that, I'll, I'll just escape for a second and see, can we... Just jump to videos. So this is this is just a, an example of the safety operation. If if um, 
you come within the, the red zone that just for demo purposes it highlights danger, but the reaction you can drive from this is to stop a machine or stop a stop a system. <clears throat> Okay. So it just hopefully gives you some idea of how, how the technology behaves and the, the, the flexibility you have with it. Um, I'll just start up the, the, the people counting one, is, is pretty good as well. So again, this is positioned over a doorway, and I'll, I'll just let it play through and you, you can see the, the effectiveness. So as, as different objects go through that are not people, it's, it's able to detect one, one from the other. And where you have multiple people enter at the same time as well, it's, it's, it's pretty good. <clears throat> okay. So yeah, hopefully they give you a flavor for the, the, power, the power of the technology and, 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 and what can be done with it. Um, just go back into presentation mode. Okay. Um, so again, the, 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 the message behind this slide is really just to emphasize, I suppose, the, the scope of, of, of what can be done using 3D time of flight. Um, and again, around next steps, the whole area of AR, VR, and um, enhancing the whole facial recognition piece of this can, can be, I suppose, a, a strong and powerful tool for, for security purposes um, and, and access control as well. So again, um, in terms of operation, in a real world scenario, it's very fast, it's efficient, and it, it doesn't, I suppose, slow down normal behavior in, in, in people moving around or um, d different activities because it's, it's pretty instantaneous in terms of recognition. Um, okay, so m moving on. Um, again, this is the, the, the project I, I referenced earlier that we have done in collaboration with Arrow. Um, so the basic design we have here is conforms to the 96 org form factor. Um, so as, as the base processing unit, we have implemented, or, or we've chosen the Dragon Board 410. Um, so that's the base processing unit, and on top of that sits our mezzanine board. And the mezzanine board is what contains our AFE, the CCD sensor, and the lens. And what mounts directly on top of that is our, our laser board end. So we do, we do have a sample of that that we can maybe show you briefly. And ag again, afterwards, it's at, if, if you want to see it in more detail, it's, it's at the, the Arrow boot um, in Hall 4A. So yeah, on, on the right side. So we, we, we've got this available soon. Hardware is there. It's going through final calibration steps and testing. Um, so within the next, I would say, six to eight weeks, um, we're, we're at a point where we can start sampling this solution. Um, so like I said, it's Snapdragon CPU. It's 96 board form factor. It will be available through analog devices and Arrow. Um, we have on, 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 on the software side, it's going to come with OS support for Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. So you get all the drivers and basic API um, software that you need to, I suppose, have, have the system working out of the box. And depending on your particular area of interest, you can go and do further development um, to, to prove out some, some of your own use cases. Uh, so again, uh, high level features are here. Um, I suppose our field of view is worth highlighting. 90 degrees by 69.2. It's a pretty wide field of view. So within, within the um, range of operation up to 10 meters, this, this should be effective for, for, for a lot of use cases. Um, 
So I think that brings me to the end. And I just want to say thank you very much for your time. And again, if you want to see the demo in operation, call to the Arrow boot, and we, we can talk in more detail or answer any questions you have. So thanks very much.